Hello and welcome to a new series on this channel. Don't worry, this isn't going to be replacing anything that I'm doing. I'm still aiming to get a proper Unity tutorial out every uh, Monday or Tuesday. This will be in addition to those. And when I started this channel, the whole point was to sort of create tutorials for beginners. And we're kind of creeping away from that beginners aspect with the Minecraft videos because I mean, there's a good chance that the next video that I do in the Minecraft series is going to have threading in it. So obviously that's that's not quite beginner level stuff. So this series is going to take that beginner's tutorial mantle so we're going to be tackling some very basic stuff so if you're one of the people who've been watching for the minecraft videos and the quick bit tutorials and all that kind of thing this video is probably not going to be for you it's called hello world the series for those that haven't sort of come from a traditional coding background because hello world is almost universally the first program that people write when they begin to learn to code the first thing you do is you get a coding editor up and you write a program that will just print hello world on the screen and that's most people's introduction to coding. It was mine many years ago, I think in QBasic was what I first learned in, or it might have been basic on the ZX Spectrum actually, but either way that's neither here nor there. So that's why it's called Hello World, we're not actually going to be doing a Hello World script today, because I mean like if you wanted to do a Hello World script in Unity you would just type and that would be it. Obviously you would put it inside of a function. So what we are going to tackle today is arrays. Like I say, most of the people already watching my channel probably don't need this tutorial. So arrays are a collection of variables. So say you had a class, this is our class now currently, arrays. Say you wanted to store 12 ints, or we're gonna say three ints because it's less typing. And you might type public int A, public int B, and public int C. And that's perfectly fine way of storing it, but it's not very efficient if you have a lot of ints or if you don't know how many ints you need to store. So that value may change depending on the script or depending on the information that you're pulling in from say an external file or something like that. So what we do in this case is we create an array. And an array, which we're gonna keep everything public because I'm gonna show you some stuff in Unity itself as well. It's not just gonna be all staring at code. An array is initialized by putting square brackets after your data type. So our data type, for this example will be int integers and you just put a set of square brackets there and then you put whatever you're calling your array so we're just going to put array of ints and that's that now i learned unity quite similar to how it seems like a lot of people learn unity which is watching youtube videos and using the unity um questions website and, and all that kind of thing and it does seem to me that one of the most common problems that beginners have with arrays is failing to understand that they need to initialize them so as we've set this now this is an array that is completely empty it has no size it has no value in it so if you try and do anything with this array if you try and get the length of the array if you try and get if you try and put anything into the array you're going to get an error and that's because it's not been initialized so in a function or in your start you would put something like array of ints equals new int and then you would put the size, so let's put five. So this has created an array of five integers and whatever the default state for that data type, this here is, will be the default of these. So an integer, when you initialize it, if you don't give it a value, is zero. So this is currently an array of five zeros. If you created your own custom data class and you made an array of that, and in that data class, you didn't give it a default state. So an initialized version of that data class is null, then you would get an error trying to access it because it would just be an array of null values. The way you can set things from here is you could do it like this but you would uh, get a specific index by calling your array putting some square brackets after it and then the number so we put three and then you could just put equals and then whatever number one thing to know is that the size of the array is from zero not from one so even though the size of the array is five the maximum index is four because we're starting at zero so you've got zero one two three four that's five indexes. You haven't got a fifth one because that would make it six items. So you can get the size of the array. You don't need to know what this value is here. You don't need to know what you initialized it as by typing dot length. So if we, let's do a bit of, uh, so if I debug dot log this, and then we go into Unity, and as you can see, I've got rid of the game window. We're just looking at console because we're not going to be seeing anything in the actual game. And I just create an empty object here, and I pull my arrays script onto it. We'll just call it arrays for the sake of neatness. 
you can see we are displaying that we have a length of five. And the reason I've shown you that, other than showing you how you can get the length of an array, is because it is important to note that it is showing you the size of the array, not the maximum index. So if you wanted the last index, say we wanted to call uh, whatever the last current one is, we couldn't put array of ints dot length as our index number because that would actually give us five and five is out of bounds. So what we would have to do if we wanted to get the last index, whatever that is, is we would have to type minus one and then that would actually give us the last index. So let's just get rid of this for a second. So another way we can initialize it is by setting the values at the same time as initializing the array. So the way you would do that is at the end of your array of ints equals new int five, you would then put a space, curly bracket, and then you could set your values in there. So you could have 45, 76, 23, nine, and 12. And then that has set a value for each one. And then a way we could quite easily display this is if we just do a for each. For each is a nice easy way of looping through anything. So you pass in a list, a collection of type. It could be a list or an array. It doesn't have to be just be an array. In this case, we're passing in int. So for each int, and then we'll just call it number in array of ints. So that's just literally going through this array and for every integer in that array, that's what this is. It's telling it what type it's looking for. So if we passed an array of anything other than ints into here, we get an error for each int and then do something in here. And what we're going to have it do is we're going to debug.log and then we're just going to type and then down here, debug.log total length of array array events dot length. And then if we go back to here and run that, we can see it's listed all of the numbers that we've put into there and it has given us our total length at the end. The reason that I made it public is because if we look over here, when it's public, you can actually access this array in the inspector. So this is useful if you have a day. This is another reason why you'd want to access the length because you could, I mean, you, you wrote your code, so you're gonna know exactly what size you've initialized this array at. However, if we, we'll just stop this script. If we delete this line here, now if we, if we made this private, because the other thing about making it public in the inspector is it does automatically initialize it. So if we made this private and then we ran this code, give it a chance to update, we would get an error. See, we're getting this null reference exception error. Now we're getting that because we're trying to loop through an array that we haven't initialized. However, with it being public, if we make it public now, just stop that. Now it's in the inspector here, it's automatically initialized. So if I run it now, we get a total length of zero, but no error because it is initialized, even though there's nothing in it. So we can set this size to go with three and then just put a couple of random values and then run it again and we have our values. And that's one of the reasons why you'd want to use the length value because even though you can initialize it in the code and you will know exactly what size you've initialized that array to, it's if you did it this way, which is more practical when working in Unity, there's gonna be a lot of times when you're gonna have arrays in the inspector that you'll want to change. If you change the size of that array, you're then gonna to have to go back in here and find where you've used the size of the array and change it. Whereas if you use the length value, then it will always be right regardless of what size the array is. And so the other little thing I'll just touch on, we'll just delete all this. You don't have to make it public. The thing about making it public is if you make it public, it is accessible all over the place. Like anything can get to it and that's not always good practice. So one thing you can do is you can have it private, but you can still have it show up in the inspector by typing this qualifier, serialize field, serialize field and then you would have private int and then just call it array for now. And then it would still show up in the inspector, but now it's technically private. On top of this, 
There is the alternative, which is you might have some, you might have an array that you need to be public. It's probably going to be a rare case, and probably you shouldn't do it this way because really you don't want your raw array exposed. So really, you should be writing a script or a function to modify the array for you. But say for whatever reason you have to have it public, but it's a very large array, like thousands and thousands or whatever. Unity's inspector system is not good with that kind of thing, and I'm not going to try and show you here because it will crash Unity or it will. Hang for ages but if you have thousands tens of thousands of whatever data points in your array and you have it set to show up in the inspector it will cause you problems <laughs> so if that happens what I recommend you do if you have to have it public is you put hide in inspector before your declaration and then when you go back here even though it's public it will be gone and like I say it's not great practice to have an array exposed like this really what you want to do is you create a function which will be public because if you've got it public that means you're trying to access it from somewhere else uh, and you would call it something like modify array and you would take in an index number and then from in here because this script has access to the array even though you you would make it private so that's what we would be doing you would make you would make that private and then you would use this function and then obviously in this function you would just put array index equals value and obviously you would want the value as well so it would just pass in an index and a value and then you'd set it in here but what this does is it means you can keep this private and also you can put any validation checks. So say you don't want the integers that you're passing into this array to be bigger than five. You could have your if value is greater than five, either set value to five or put up a, a debug warning or throw up an error, whatever you wanted to do. Basically, if you're passing through a function like this, you have complete control over what happens to the data as it goes in. And you can also have a similar exact same function for getting data out of the array. And then you can control the data going out as well. But if you do want to do your array as public and it is going to be a large array, definitely do not show it in the inspector. So we'll just touch on one last thing and that is multi dimensional arrays. So we're going to stick with ints. This will work exactly the same for any data type. Basically, whatever data type it is, you just like you can have string, float, whatever it is, whatever your data type is, you can have multi-dimensional arrays by putting a comma in there. So this is now a two-dimensional array. And what a two-dimensional array means is if we just bring back our start, when you initialize it, array equals new int you now need to give it two values. So we'll just do three by three. And it, you can think of this as a two dimensional grid, like a, a grid of three by three, but it would be easier to think of it as a list of arrays that are of length three. So I'll just be easier to demonstrate it if I just write it out like this. So we get rid of those. I'm gonna open some curly brackets and then basically we're gonna create three three length arrays. So just quickly type out some random numbers so this is each one of these is an array of three integers and there are three of them so your first number here corresponds to which of the arrays we are looking at and then your second number corresponds to the index within that array so if we're looking so now looking at it like this actually you can sort of see it as a two-dimensional grid if, if I make these numbers all single digits it is basically a two-dimensional grid so one by one would be well actually we start at zero remember so one by one would be seven and two by two would be one and zero by zero would be four so that's kind of that's basically how the two-dimensional array works and then if you were going to call if we were going to grab a value out of there, we would just put um, array, uh, let's see, we'll go with zero. So our first, so we're going to be accessing our first array by two. So that gives us, that should be giving us seven. So let's just test that. There we go, seven. And then obviously this works the same way for three dimensional arrays and however many dimensions you want to go up to. And it also, it works the same for whether you're using an integer or a float or a vector three. Actually, I will touch on one more thing. Let's say 
you have a public class and I'm going to go over classes in a bit more detail uh, in another video, but just say you have a public class, we'll just call it my class. And in that class you had, let's say a public int equals not and a, oh, sorry, you have to give it a, a value and a public string equals nothing. This is a lazy way of initializing, by the way. Rarely you want a constructor in here, but I'm gonna go over that stuff in a later video. You could then make this two-dimensional array of type my class. Now, obviously this is gonna throw up errors now because we're gonna try to put in data that doesn't work. So we'll just delete that for a second and we'll delete this. And just, just for the sake of showing you, I'm gonna make it a single dimensional array and we're gonna make it public again so that we can see it in the inspector. And as you see, it's not showing up in the inspector. And the reason for that is we need to actually serialize it like with the serialize field, only this time we're typing system.serializable. And this makes this class able to show up in the inspector. So if we give our array a size of three, and then for each one, we'll just put some values. And then we go back to here and we'll do our for each again. And this time it's gonna be for each my class, we'll just call it M in array. And we're gonna do debug dot log. And this time we're gonna use string dot format. We'll put there are, and we'll just say, so for our first value is going to be the number, the integer, and our second value is going to be the string. And then we pass in those values. So the first will be m dot integer and then m dot text. You can see that we're accessing both parts of our custom class. And that I think is where we're gonna stop on this one. Um, I will go over lists as well and other data types like queues and uh, possibly dictionaries as well. And, we're gonna, and as I say, I do plan to do a bit more in depth a lot more in depth on making your own custom classes and stuff like that uh basically all all the fundamental stuff that it's quite easy to overlook if you're a non-coder and you've come into unity and you're sort of learning a lot like i did to, i mean i have a i have some coding background before i started learning unity but i wasn't far off a complete novice when i started so i i, th I feel like i do have a bit of a grasp on the sort of things that you can overlook when you're learning from youtube videos and questions online it's there, there are some very fundamental basics that it's quite easy to think aren't important to what you want to do when it it makes life so much easier so that's that's the aim anyway if you like the video like and subscribe if you have any ideas for what you want in this series let me know in the comments and like i say for the people who are already subscribed to this channel don't worry these videos aren't taking the place of any of the videos that you're here for and that's all for now Bye bye